Okay, so, at, and I apologize for being a little too um, overzealous on that other video, but it just sometimes it's just like, there has to be a limit to everything. When I'm working with people, I don't yell at them. I respect them. When I'm at church, I'm respectful. Um, when I'm dealing with people who are bent on greed and lust, I found out the hard way how that's just where you are. And in my opinion, that is your choice in life. I'm not speaking on that anymore. I'm done. Um, what I wanted this to be about is keeping yourself from sin and why it is important to fast. Push back your plate. Uh, fasting. All A lot of different religions do fasting for different reasons. Um, Christians do it to, uh, to put the flesh under subjection. Um, and to hopefully push closer in God for your blessing. It's, it's for your, because God wants to bless us all the time. He just is, sometimes we need to push our, our flesh back to focus more on him. And in that time that you fast, my suggestion is that you read the word of God. Take some time out for yourself. Um, read the word of God. Stay away from a lot of friends. Um, I actually had an experience where I fast. My friend knew I was fasting too. She knew where I was and I was fasting. So one day we, we, we fast together. We went work out in the morning. It was great. We went worked out in the morning. We fast. We prayed all day. By the end of the day, um, some real stuff start happening. This is the thing when you're walking with God. God is not mocked. <laughs> Let me be really clear. You can have somebody that's been on so much witchcraft that's around you. And if you just stay the course in Jesus, you'll see what he does. You'll see what the Holy, how the Holy Spirit moves. Just trust him. That right it I went by, we went from one house prayed. I prayed around one, and I'm like, it's it feels like cold water. It was basically illness. I didn't know what it was. But it was surrounding them. And I didn't touch them. I told them to get together. And it was illness pouring off of him into her. But what I knew already is be not quick to lay hands. So I prayed around him. But guess what? I have a feeling that was a setup. I have been in some situations where it's like these people are relentless with you. But if you are relentless with God, trust me, you'll win every time. It makes me just... Sometimes you gotta got your feelings. <laughs> I'm like, plenty of times I'm like, I'm not in a relationship with this chick. I can kick her to the curb in, in two seconds. But because I care as a woman that she gets spent all the dog on time by dudes, I care. I kept her in my life. But I did not need that. Okay? So we went from one house, prayed, boom, prayed over family. Went to another house, prayed over a uh, girl. Um, she ended up getting something in her back. Like now I think she's slumped over and I know I prayed for her. It's number two. Um, by the end of the day, I prayed for a woman who I could see something on the inside. I don't know if it was an alien or what it was, but it was on the inside of her. This is in Michigan. Okay. She was a waitress. From that point, we went to the parking lot and it was a gentleman in a truck and this was the end of it because she wanted to see where I was at. Everything she brought to me got annihilated in one day. And all I kept looking at is like, I'm your real friend. Like, what's wrong with you? She was off. Full-blown jealousy. That's just where she was. And that's probably where she is now. But let me just be honest. Um, by the end of the night, God used me in a way that can only happen with the anointing coming in like that. And it was with a homosexual man who was enshrined in darkness. He probably was a, a warlock or something like that. And the guy that he was with was just his friend. But I had to see through the darkness to tell him he's gay. And I told him in front of his face. I said, he's gay. He's trying to make you gay. 
It's a difference from someone who knows this person is a homosexual and someone who their total agenda in life is to turn people out. That's full-blown lust. And now you open up Pandora's box. Because what is in there? What's coming out now? What is coming out? You don't have a clue. You don't know what was packed up in some other person that you didn't just got because of this one person. Transference of spirits. And some people get a lot dumped on them. They get gargantuan amounts of loads of other people's junk thrown at them. And people say, because you take it. Well, I'm here to tell you, if you understand, if you trust God and you get into prayer, allow the Holy Ghost to move. When God moves, don't get all excited just yet. Stay the course. I had one girl, and I know she know God. She was like, I'm getting chills. You ain't supposed to be getting chills. Sorry to burst your bubble. That's not a part of a walk with God. If you are in the Holy Ghost. That's why you need to push to get into the Holy Ghost. That's why you need to put your push your plate back. That's why you need to fast. You have to do that. Because the chills, that's not God. The chills is you probably interacting with something somebody else got going on around you in that church. That's probably what that is. Or in school. And you ain't thinking about that person. You know, whatever. But you are interacting with their spirit. That's pretty much what that is. That chill stuff, I got saved at 18. So that would be a good 22 years, excuse me, 24 years. Full blown that I've been new. Do not do that. You have to learn to trust the Holy Ghost. You have to. You have to. It, ma it matters. You need to know God. You have to. This stuff is crazy. I don't know what's going on. But I'm going to say this. Um, I'm talking about keeping yourself from greed and lust. And I cannot, I can't say enough that you can't control what somebody else is doing. You can't control what somebody else is inviting into their spirit. I learned the hard way. I learned it when I was supposed to be working on my degree. Okay? Worrying about some nut running around here, hopping off in a gay club. She wasn't even a gay woman. Hopping. She was. She knew about transference of spirits early. This was, she already came, she already came knowing. But God blessed in the midst of her mess. That's when you invite the Holy Ghost in, he does stuff that you cannot do. You have to trust him. Because the, the most important out of all of them, the, 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 strong, the strongest spirit was that lust on, the, on that man. That was the strongest one. That's number one. The one that was most important to me was the waitress who was dealing with the thing in, in, inside of her that was strange. And it looked like it had, it looked like a bar, it looked like a, uh, it looked like a form of a person with bars on it. And she was ready. As the as, and I'm talking to the children of God right now. I'm not really talking to uh, brand new saints. I'm sorry, that's not for you. You want milk right now? You need to know that. I am talking to saints of God that have been, that have been saved, that have claimed it, or they're standing up to to lead somebody that have been saved for a long time. This is not challenging a preacher that's been there, done that. I'm not challenging that. I'm challenging any child of God that just really. Wants to be used by the Lord. Fast. Fast and pray and worship. And read. And let God lead you through the word. That's what he did with me. Take him at his word. Be obedient to him. That's it. Uh, like maybe a, within a month or so. Church service. A huge. Minister. Gospel. Well, we already knew that he was a minister anyway. He just ministered through song. But we knew there was ministry because we, we went into worship. And he was so mad that day. And I'm looking at, why is he so mad? Why is he so mad? 
I didn't know why. Now I know. People were trying to bring a stronghold against him because they were so jealous of what God was doing for him. It's the truth. They were full-blown jealous. He was blessed so doggone much from being in a group where everybody loved commission. I'm talking about Mr. Fred Hammond. They were so jealous of him. I know what they did to that man. Because I prayed, and nobody going to tell me nothing. No preacher that's going to come from, I don't give you a crap if you are a bishop. That comes from another state. I lived in Michigan. I lived on Pennington. Check it out. It ain't a bad neighborhood. It's right down the street from Million Dollar Homes. That's where I grew up at. Sorry. Gotcha. Go downtown. I went, I went downtown with a man that was full. The one I married. That was He was already in the witchcraft anyway. Whatever he brought to my street. I trust God. And we brought it down. I made him come with me. To Belle Isle. And it, and it landed right in, on top. Right in the middle of Canada and Michigan. I've been checkmated this. You have to stay childlike. And let everybody fall like dominoes. Let them. So what? Let them fall like dominoes. On the day that Minister Fred Hammond was out enjoying his blessings off of the river with his Corvette. The guy that I ended up marrying rolled by on his, uh, my friend was in the front and I was in the back. You know, it's not until years later you find out, oh, all of this was to, 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 you know, come against Christians. It's just like, what? What I'm saying is this. I've been through a lot. Trust God. Fast and pray. Trust him. I got the joy of the Lord on me and people think it's me being prideful and I'm like, I don't know what to do with you. <laughs> I've been through too much. I don't have to hold back my joy, but I can't speak up for myself and say, y'all pretty much doing the same thing for Michigan here. And it's ridiculous. It is to me. It's ridiculous. So, um, I don't, I'm not on here speaking about any man. I'm speaking about spiritual wickedness. I'm, spe I'm speaking about lust. I seen the same thing that I seen in my dream was on Maury Povich. So I know all this stuff was, was already planned where they were going to put uh, either a bisexual uh, dancer and all that lust that's on him. He was, you know, but I'm going to be with this woman. But he's really into men. And this woman is, is ill. And I'm not trying to be... This is not me being funny, but she is probably from a lower income environment and she does not know spiritually how much bondage is on her already. And then you got this man that's hiding that he is homosexual, dumping off his lust onto her and her heart. What it was called when I was grown when I was going to church when I was growing up, it was called a um, family curse. Then it was a cycle of of uh, of bondage or whatever. You have to people who've been through things, people who have actually seen the anointing move, have to talk about it. You have to testify. You have to say what really happened. I've been around a, a prophet. She ain't got no anointing on her at all. Everybody falling. I'm wondering why it's not me. Because she's not anointed. They've been trained to fall down. And it's a cult. I've been around so many doggone cults. And I mean, there's a lot of them. A lot of cults. Where people are just being misled. And they are in the church. But you cannot use that excuse as not to get closer to God. I've been through it myself. And I can tell you. You don't have that option. It, listen. It's a song called. I need to put that on here. Don't stop praying. I love the way this woman sings. I can't even sing like her. Because I, I, I know I haven't probably been, haven't been through the level of darkness that she's been through. But in that song she is saying. 
don't stop and she's not playing with you because when I got saved there was sometimes I was just like man I'm feeling good I'm looking in the mirror and anointing on me you know I'm feeling pretty and all this other stuff and it can't get any better than this and the truth of the matter is when you are a Christian you're not just walking like anybody else you're you're you cannot compare yourself to any singer that's dealing with anything that's not a child of God. If they are, they just getting their blessings. Boom, boom. But if they're not, there is no comparison to what that person that's in front of that church that's praying for the anointing to come in, that that woman or that man, because God is not a respectable person, that woman or that man that is bringing that anointing in, they are thinking about the people they see every Sunday. It's a, it's a relationship. When I got saved, the people that I, were, that I was around and I know prayed for me while I was in that church, and I was telling my mom the other day, I was like, I didn't know who was praying for me. I felt like there was a lot of people in that church praying for me. Because even when I was messing up, it was, I was always set up to be blessed. Always. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to tell you, the word cuts both ways. You can, you can be in a situation where your life has always been your own. You've always been an individual, but you had to deal with other people not wanting you to be an individual. And then at 42, it's just like, you got to be the dumbest person I could ever think of. But, but, in the, but it, within the constraints of God's word, I can't call you a fool. I have to be speed learned on mental illness. Like, it's a whole bunch of things that has to happen. Because I've been through so much dumb stuff. And it's like, what are, we, what are you talking about? You just don't want to know God. You can yell at me all day. Listen to me. You can yell at me all day off this day on street. Coming to a new state. I go to another state and they already got a good economy. Boom, boom. And I'm not getting yelled no more. At, at no more. I know that. What I'm trying to say is, I am a respectful person who does not always get respected. And it's not about putting it on a black woman or a black man or anybody. Well, I don't know what to do now. That's where I'm at with this right now. Both people in these videos were black. It was three different people that were black. And I noticed that every single spot had cameras. What video, what, what website are you creating the saying, because I'm not going to be the only person doing this. What, what website are you creating that's saying, report it. If we do it together, guess what? The police will know we respect them and we honor the position that they're in in life. And we're not just, you know, living to stress them out all freaking day. Because I'm in this dang on hotel. And I watched the, the manager call a couple times because she's mentally ill. And she hasn't put things in place. And she don't care enough. For the people who are probably going to. This is going to be a good housing situation for them. Because I already talked to the, one of the men. He said somebody's living. Because it's been a good thing for her. The real estate going down hurt everybody. Some people just had enough to pay their they mortgage, but they're underwater. Like, it's real. Nothing's perfect. But there is a scripture, not a scripture, it's a song, it's a gospel song called Don't Stop Praying. Um, is it Milton, Brun Milton Brunson. And they got on these uh, <laughs> on these purple robes and gold, it's like purple, gold, and white, right? And it's beautiful. And, but this song, if you knew that being saved, it's going to hit you, it might hit you the wrong way. It's one of them songs where it's like, you know what, she being mean. She ain't being nice. Trust me, I was thinking the same way. I was like, but I was like, I know what I need. Because I'm, I'm faster than a lot of these people in here. <laughs> I didn't really know it was mental illness. I just really love God. And I'm just like, as much as you want to give me, give me. 
And I needed to hear that older, that older woman who was more experienced spiritually to say, don't stop praying. Nothing is perfect. You're always going to have a wolf. You're always going to have a snake. You're always going to have somebody around who wants to tear you down. What I'm dealing with right now is people just don't have any idea, any clue of how to get into entertainment and it's open. So what they feel to do, and I didn't say fail, I said feel, F-E-E-L. They feel to exploit the next person for what they're going through. And then it just becomes this complete chaotic mess. It's not gumbo. Gumbo is not mess. It's thought put into gumbo. It's thought put into a, a, a bowl of a pot of grits. A good one. It's thought process. It's it's a it's thought put into that cake that's fluffy and delicious and and the pancakes. It's thought put into it. When you just stick in feelings, you are sticking with emotion. You're sticking with mental illness, and you have to come out of it. Some people have gotten their deliverance. Some people are in the position of power and influence, and I know they haven't. I know they haven't because as soon as I got close to something, I know I could, I could fight. I had to deal with the reality that they have not gotten past that. I had to deal with that. So I'm getting, I'm, I'm, I'm getting dealt with so many more. It was like, it was like a full blown one, two punch on me. My older relatives dying, older people in the gospel, excuse me, in the, in the, in the body of Christ, not where they're supposed to be spiritually. Cause they done made a lot of money and they done forgot the growth part and that this is a continuous walk with God. You're never going to know everything about Jehovah. Never. I'm going to end it right here. This is part two and I'm going to pick it up with Jesus telling the disciples that is not for you to know. And I know I put this in the video from yesterday, but I'm going to put it in today as well. It's part two.